Hi, um, I'm Scott Reeve, the chair for this session. Um, so the first talk is from uh, Philip Breschler. He's an iOS professional here in Berlin, and he's also the creator of OwnTube and Cover.li. Um, and his talk is, Don't Fear Our New Robot Overlords. Hi there. Um, my name is Philip. I'm an iPhone developer here from Berlin. Um, I want to talk to be, uh, you about a new way to test the mobile devices. Um, first of all, thank you for coming, because I don't think this is like a very Euro Python talk. It's not about back end something and you put in JSON data and something like that. It's uh, very physical. It's a robot. Um, and computer vision and stuff like that. Uh, you can see the robot later. I'm just setting up some video and you will see everything just fine, I hope so, at least at that part where you do a live demo. But it's probably a bad idea anyway. So um, let me first show me like, my little agenda. Um, so uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about problems when testing on mobile devices. Uh, if you're talk, uh, testing um, web apps or apps or websites that are mobile ready or something like that, I don't like the word apps, but it's a website. Um, then the idea <laughs> why and what I was coming up with, then um, the concept of how we do this, and then I'm going to show you hopefully a working live demo and some code. And then some conclusion and learnings, because there were a lot of learnings, actually. Um, so talking about uh, problems in general when testing on mobile devices, uh, you just need to check, because a web app or a website is usually a front end for some data service, you need to check how that looks, if it, the texts are right, if the localization is right, stuff like that. So you can do, of course, tests where you just um, check coordinates, font names, font sizes, colors, and so on. But in the end, you probably never know if that's really good looking or if the coordinate system was flipped, that's possible, or other stuff that's just awkward. So um, in the end, you never know. And so you just need a human eye to check this. And that's OK if you're just doing an app with like four or five views or a small website, that's OK. But if you're having like a large web project with a lot of sites, you're probably going to miss something um, if you just want to do a test after each deployment, for instance. And you need a lot of manpower to do this as well. So of course, you can do some testing with non-real devices, like simulators. Um, I don't know who of you is a mobile developer or has some contact with something like that. OK, a few. Uh, um, so a simulator is something iOS uses, for instance. You run it on your uh, Mac, um, and it only runs on a Mac. That's the first problem. And the other problem is simulators, because they are simulators, not emulators, um, have too much computation power, because they use yet that i7 something um, on your device, on your notebook, or iMac, or whatever. and um, you have no memory issues. And that's one of the biggest things you have to keep in mind when developing a mobile is how to deal with memory and working with memory issues, working with um, you don't have that much memory to store that image in, so I need to find a way to something like that. Um, so that's an issue, um, because uh, my notebook has like eight gigabits of RAM, gigabytes of RAM. That's like, um, I don't know, 10 times more than my iPhone or even more. So no memory issues. And of course, you don't have a touch interface. And um, if you see apps that are developed by beginners um, that only use the simulator to test their interfaces, you always see that the buttons are quite tiny. And of course, if you are running a simulator, you can just use the mouse to, well, tap them. And that works, because a mouse is quite exact. You just have that little thing you touch. Uh, but a finger or two fingers are way larger than a mouse pointer, so that's an issue. And another issue, and especially on iOS, is the browser engines are slightly different. Uh, the simulator uses the WebKit that comes from macOS. Um, the real device uses iOS WebKit. And yes, both WebKits, both are nearly the same version, but only nearly the same version, and they have just different bugs. Um, and some APIs are not available. 
Um, WebGL, for instance, or OpenGL is um, slightly different or not available. Uh, you can't do Bluetooth stuff in simulator and some other stuff as well. Um, then you say, hey, yeah, I'm having an Android phone, so I'm having an emulator. And emulators are great because they're emulating the hardware, but they have other issues. For instance, they are incredibly slow. Um, if you ever use the Android simulator or en emulator, you probably have uh, registered that it takes about two minutes to start up. Um, and it's hard to interactive, uh, interact with, especially if you're doing CI testing, um, because you never know if the app was started, if the simulator was started. It's quite hard to make a script around that thing. So that's a problem with an emulator as well. And then, of course, every manufacturer of an Android phone does their own browser and interface and stuff like that. And you never get the, all the images you need in an emulator to test all those. So um, Samsung uses a different uh, browser engine or web engine than, let's say, HTC. They use different versions. And even if you have, let's say, OK, that's an Android KitKat phone. Um, yeah, it's a KitKat. But only on the Nexus, you will have the right web engine. And on the next device running KitKat, there is another web engine or another framework. And um, a little bit issue that can be fixed, I heard, is that um, on Android, you don't have the Google Play services in emulator. Um, so you can't use Google Maps, for instance, or other uh, services by Google. So that's an issue as well. So the best solution, of course, is um, to test on real devices using real inputs, so fingers, and a checking eye. So you always need to know how it looks. And the best solution right now is me, a human, and that's well, that's OK, but I need to some sleep. And well, so um, I set off uh, to New Shores and uh, tried to fix that issue and having an idea. Um, and this idea came up to me if I saw a talk, when I saw the talk about Zikoli for automated testing of websites. And the idea was just to build Zikoli for mobile devices here already. And you're, now you're like, OK, what's Zikoli? Um, <laughs> Yeah, Zikoli. Um, Zikoli is, um, as you see, an, web, an, an app that you run on your PC, Mac, or Linux. It's based on Java and written in Python, so Python in Java. Um, and Zikoli um, is, was made as a tool for automating computer tasks with screenshot. As you can see, um, there's a scripting language just around there, and um, it's very Python-like. Um, it's just Click, image, type, string, click, image, and so on and so on. And um, that's very easy. Of course, you can uh, do stuff like uh, find that part in that part and stuff like that. So um, great. Um, was invented by the MIT. It's now developed at the University of Colorado Boulder at the Zikuli Labs. Um, it's still maintained and stuff, but it's made for desktops and not for CI. So, to get it uh, running in a, a, a continuous uh, testing something, you need to uh, write, use it with a robot framework and do some packaging. And it's incredibly hard to run on Linux. I tried. It's not that good because it's not made for uh, running headless and stuff like that. But it's possible. And if you want to more know about it, I uh, probably know some a guy who knows a guy. They did that for a web, um, web shop. And it works. Um, so, idea was making the same for mobile devices. In short, make a screenshot, use computer vision to detect an icon on that, and tap that icon. And for that tapping part, we use a robot, um, because robots never get tired. So, first things first, we need to do a screenshot. Um, and doing a screenshot is um, quite easy if you um, connect it over USB. On Android, you just use the ADB command. That's the command that came with, uh, comes with the um, Android SDK and is used to interact with the device. And you just do some bash magics, a longer terminal thing you put in your terminal, and then you have a screenshot. Um, works in 90% of the cases on most devices. Some manufacturers, of course, do some stuff different because I don't know why. They just do it. Um, and on iOS, you can do a screenshot using Xcode and iTunes. And you, if you are having an iPhone using iTunes, you probably know that there are screenshots in the interface of iTunes. And they are coming from the device. So there is a channel to do a screenshot. But there is officially no way to do this with the terminal. 
but there are also iPhone users using, using Linux. Um, I don't know why, actually, but they um, reverse engineered that protocol and called it libi mobile device. And um, with that, you can interact uh, from the terminal with an iPhone device, and you can do screenshots um, if the device is in developer mode. But well, if you're an iPhone developer, your device is probably in developer mode. So quite easy. We have a screenshot. Yay. Um, now we need to detect an icon. Um, so finding that needle in the haystack. Um, and for this, you can just use OpenCV. Um, OpenCV is great, and you just do a template recognition, and that's fancy for finding an image in an image. And that's um, totally easy, I have to say. Um, just if I started, when I started this project, I th first thought, OK, this is probably the hardest part, getting the computer vision stuff to work. No, it isn't. Uh, for those who uh, never heard of OpenCV, it's a C, C++ written library to do computer vision. And it has great Python wrappers that are so great that probably everyone who's using OpenCV is using Python. Um, so um, it's quite a simple API for doing such a complex task. It's actually well, four lines or something to, inter to find that needle in the haystack. Um, and in the end, you get a coordinate. Um, of that screenshot shot and the size, so of that thing you want to find. You just get a coordinate and the size, and then you can just calculate the middle point where you need to tap. So now we are talking about robots. Um, finding a robot for this is, was not that easy, actually. Uh, the problem was um, I need a robot that's quite fast. I need a robot that's not too expensive. I don't want to spend, I don't know, 2,000, 20,000 euros for industrial robots, something like that, um, which is great, but <clears throat> I don't have the money for this. And my, C uh, my CTO was like, well, you need to find something cheaper. So I found this baby here, or this, if you can see it. Um, you will see it later. It's called the Tapster bot, or short Tapster. Uh, as you can see, it's um, a delta robot. A delta robot is a robot where you have three fingers that um, have their actuators, so that thing that interacts with the physical world is in the middle. Um, it's made with an Arduino. Uh, three servos, just like standard servos you get from um, uh, that RC hobby store around yeah, the next corner, and uh, 3D printed parts. So if you own a 3D printer, this thing will cost you with the bolts and nuts and everything are like 120 euros. If you don't own a 3D printer, uh, it's just around 250 euros with printing um, because I owned one, or a friend of mine owned one. Uh, I, the printing was quite cheap and we used uh, laser cutting for uh, the large parts so they are a little stronger, but you, if you just have a 3D printer like an Ultimaker, you can just print it out. And um, yeah, it's the, now we're coming to the boo point. Uh, the driver is, written, driver, uh, driver is uh, written in Node.js, um, and we come to that later. Not good. Um, <clears throat> so talking to a robot. Um, of course, we need to interact with the robot a little um, to tell him how, where to tap and stuff like that. And to do this, I decided to use WebSockets. Um, so why WebSockets? Um, First of all, the robots came with a driver that already had some WebSocket support, so I need only, only need to extend it. Um, and WebSockets are, could could be a good solution for this because you can theoretically just change out the robot without changing the uh, Python code. So um, you can just use another robot. Um, so as I saw, the robot is written in a Node.js app, um, and that's not that good. Um, the Node.js app is slightly undocumented, and yeah, <clears throat> coming to that later as well. Um, so theoretically, the robot could be exchanged quite easily because you just have to implement the same WebSocket uh, thing. So yeah, more robots. If you have another one or find a better Delta robot or a better, better XY axis robot, you can just use another one. So now we're coming to that part where we all put it together and bring it to work, hopefully. Um, and that's called Project Golden Eye. Um, I don't know, it's not a fancy name, but I just called it that way. So the idea was to test a mobile website or an app, uh, just written in a standard Python unit test test. Um, because 
if you are ever used like unit tests one or two, you know that's um, quite easy to write those, such tests. And of course, um, one good thing is that the usual CI servers like Jenkins or Team City, um, we are using Team City because I'm living in a Java environment without really wanting it, but anyway. Um, so you can just uh, uh, use unit tests as a standard. You don't have to write your own uh, parsers for the output and stuff like that. Um, all that heavy lifting, like detecting uh, images in an image and making screenshot, all that heavy lifting is abstracted away. You just uh, write that test. It's quite easy. In the end, uh, you just write a test where you say, uh, tap there, find this, tap there, uh, find this in this region, stuff like that. I'll show you in a minute. And um, writing such a test is quite easy. Um, even my QA guy can do this, so you don't need, uh, if you wanted to do uh, regular testing of a large web project or a large app, you just can um, give something, a tool like this, to your QA and they can write the test themselves. Great as well, and they even don't even need a Mac for this, which is a problem if you're running iOS, doing iOS apps, because uh, usually they don't have an app, a Mac. So, we are coming to the part where I hopefully don't fail showing you a demo. demo. Um, okay, um, just need to do some setup. Okay. Oh, okay. So, um, okay, so now we have a video feed from my belly. And now. <laughs> Um, okay, so there's a robot um, there on the right side. I will just correct it in a minute. You can see the phone. Um, and I will just show you the test read bit, and then we're doing that thing where the robot moves. Um, so, where we have it? There. Okay, um, let's try to do that with the microphone. Okay, as you can see here, this is um, our little example test. It's uh, quite cheap because I didn't have that much time to do a good test that's uh, working because of that robot. Um, I can just um, show you it. So we have a little setup where we just um, set up the tester, that's the class we're interacting with, um, setting it to debug through true just to show you some uh, uh, images of what the robot saw. <laughs> um, and you just give it a start command and then we have this little thing um, to find the path where the screenshots are. Um, and this is the test. Of course, it's not that a good test or something, just in demo. Um, so the first thing is we wanted to find, or we wanted to assert that um, if I give it the screenshot of the settings icon that's uh, um, in the, can show you to it later, it's just this part of the screenshot I make. Um, I wanted uh, to make sure that it taps this, and if it tapped and found it and tapped it, I will get uh, a region object back so I can know, okay, it, ta it uh, tapped that thing. Um, then I'm doing a find. Uh, find is just look on the screen and find this object and return me the region where it was. Um, so this is what I did here. Um, just get the title of the settings in German, um, Einstellungen, um, and tap that title to just um, scroll up the table view of the settings so we can find the airplane mode settings. You can just see in a minute. Um, so we're going to look if there is an, the airplane mode settings in the settings. So maybe the, user for, uh, the developer forgot to uh, put it in there. And um, then we use the find in command. Um, if you're using the find in command, um, you just give it, of course, the screenshot you want to find, that icon. And you give it a region object. As you can see, that's airplane mode role, there, where I got back from that find. Um, so I can just search in a certain region, because maybe um, there are more than one switch. So that's where you do a Boolean value um, in that view. So if I would just do a find, I would get multiple and never know if there is one in that region. 
And then I just uh, tap the Bluetooth settings um, and just see if there is a, the Bluetooth standing in the title. A very simple test, um, of course. And then I'll have a teardown, um, just tell the robot to stop what he's doing. So that's the test. Uh, now we're coming to the part where we're going to run that. Um, OK. So. So. OK. Um, Right hand side, you just see the screen of the phone. Um, that's um, just here via AirPlay. So it's not for testing, just for the for showing you that there is a screen and that's working. Um, on left hand side, you see the robot that's here, and you see my terminal. So I just do Python test pi. <laughs> so. Ah, and it failed because um, the flight mode is on um, and um, we are searching for another icon. So just let me just quickly fix that. Um, never run your demo in another environment. Uh, okay, start again. Okay. Just see that's the standard output for uh, unit test. Scrolls up. Taps on Bluetooth, search that. So, yay, the test ran. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I know that's not like great test, but should work as a demo. Um, so, what the robot gives you are output images. If you want to, you just set the button uh, true, as I just uh, showed you. And then you can get those. Uh, fancy uh, images in black and white that gives you um, an idea what the robot saw. I'll just um, try to show it with, to you. Um, so this is just the screenshot it does, something like that, which is the screen of the phone. Um, see, there are several of those, of course. And, you, and then you have this um, starting with debug. And then you can see, okay, um, you can see that there is that um, square around that uh, settings uh, icon. And there's a square on that uh, settings title. And then uh, we use it again. Then we're searching for that airplane mode thing, found it. Uh, then we searched for that Bluetooth. But first of all, we did that find in. And um, I don't know exactly why I did this, but oh, I did it. Um, where it's, uh, they have another name in the file name, in the debug file name. So you can, so, uh, you can see that there was this switch um, in there. And then uh, we went to Bluetooth, saw that there is a, the role I'm searching for. And then there's the title of the Bluetooth setting. So um, this is um, how that looks. And of course, I can just show you real quick um, how the code of the unit test, uh, of that libra library looks. Um, so it's. No, that's not the library. That's my test. Uh, uh, that's that library. So it's um, probably the worst Python code you ever saw because I'm not a Python developer. I'm an Objective C guy, and I know Objective C quite well. And Python is just my, I don't know, my hobby. I would say I'm not that good. I guess um, it's probably not that what you would hire me for, but. That's OK. Um, so the thing you interact with, I just uh, showed you, is that tester class um, giving you um, those commands. Um, there are some missing, of course. Um, tap, find, find in. Uh, what's missing, of course, is swiping and double tapping. So that's something we need to, I need to implement. But um, let's just see what happens if I do that tap. Um, it tells a finder class um, that's uh, I don't know, a very fi a fancy name um, that gets this, where you just uh, get the device, do a screenshot using um, um, iDevice screenshot, that's the I iOS part or the Android part. Um, iOS is default, but you just 
can give a magic number of one to use Android. Um, so then we know, okay, it's uh, Android. Um, and then it does a screenshot, finds that screenshot, um, and so on and so on. And if it do this, um, we just, uh, a moment. Da, 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 da. Ah, right. No, that's the debug. <laughs> um, okay, that's the part I never tested actually. So that's ah, that's the screenshot not find on screen here. Yeah. Okay, now we do just um, that um, CV part where we just do a template, image read, find that image, uh, get the template, do a um, get the image, get the needle height and width and so on, and then um, you got to see that there's a message CV two TM CCOEFF normed. I actually don't know what that means, but um, there are several uh, types you can use, and this is the one working best. I just played around with that. Um, and then you just do that template match, uh, match. you can just get a location back, and um, so on. And then, because uh, you get probably more than one uh, point back, usually from OpenCV, we just find the average of those. Uh, so maybe to just um, to uh, just uh, move out some noise, something like that. And then we tell the robot um, to tap on that. The robot has its own thread where it com communicates and stuff like that. So um, that's that part. OK. Um, coming to my conclusion. Um, this could be useful, actually, if you're having a large app or a large website you want to test on a mobile device, could be useful. So I will probably keep up doing this and going much further with it. Um, the problem was uh, I didn't have that much time to implement all the things I needed, and that's because of that robot. But um, come to this later. Um, testing for existing projects is especially um, the thing where I want to use it. Of course, test-driven development is important, as you probably heard in the keynote yesterday. But um, if you have a large project, you always wanted to have a test um, going on and on of all your stuff if, um, to just check if everything is right, especially if you're getting paid for certain content. You want to make sure it's in there. Um, Robots never get tired, so they do it uh, every time, every uh, night, every time you do a check-in, and they have about the same sleeping cycle as a developer, probably none, and um, our QA has a slightly different sleeping cycle. And the robot's hardware, as you can see, is working okay, it's fine, but um, it's okay if you're looking away from that little um, cables there, but it's okay. Uh, it's working, but the software just isn't. Um, that's we're coming to the learnings. Um, a function and a function and a function isn't normal, but in Node.js it is. So um, I don't know who came up with this language, um, and I don't know who wrote this code. I, I know who wrote this code anyway, but it's just terrible. It's hard to debug. It isn't documented, that code specifically code, but the whole that, that whole layout with those functions getting on the function, getting in a function, and it's all non-blocking. <laughs> so, not good. Um, never trust a GitHub project with one maintainer. Never. They probably never gonna merge in your uh, commits or your pull requests, and just never answer to your issues, and probably never answer to an email as well. But it's all open source. Well, yeah, kind of. Uh, OpenCV is fun and you should probably use it far more than um, you probably do right now. It's, if you're doing uh, OpenCV, then yay. And it's not that hard to learn, actually. They have a very, uh, very nice documentation with good examples, stuff like that. So OpenCV, yay. And that's it. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, I hope, any questions? If you want to just, OK. You wanna, if you want to just see the demo again, we can just do that. No. <laughs> company called The Test People, um, and we do something quite similar with a, a library we've written called Geist. Okay. Uh, it does visual automation. Um, mainly at the moment, it's kind of, uh, its strong points would be around Windows, but we, we have you know, kind of thought, you know, could we apply this to testing of mobile devices and stuff? So um, I'm really interested in uh, coming and talking to you about your robot, um, but the, yeah, I just <laughs> thought it might be nice if you knew about yeah, Geist, because um, Geist is sure. quite cool. 
Uh, yeah, sure, we can talk, of course. Um, I'm, only problem is I have a sprint to finish and I just need to set off quite soon, actually. Um, I'm just here for the day, but um, you can just write me a mail or just Twitter me or just uh, catch me at that door. Um, and yeah, sure. Uh, the robot is not my robot, it's from someone else on the US. And, um, but I, of course, um, I started writing my own Python driver because I'm getting tired of that Node.js shit. Um, and the problem there is that um, uh, the inverse kinematics that's fancy for telling the robot where to move um, are so buggy in that Node.js code, porting it to Python doesn't help. So I probably need to uh, f uh, do some math first, but then that should work quite better than now. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Other yeah. questions? Okay. So you probably expect that question. Did you try to use it to get a really high score in, Sma uh, in Farmville? <laughs> <laughs> I don't play Farmville. Uh, what I've played is uh, 2048 and 3, so um, yes, that's quite a good idea. Actually, that robot first, the idea of that guy who built it first, uh, had the idea of playing Angry Birds with it. Um, so you can just, mod uh, just manipulate the, uh, the angel angle where you just shoot with very, very precise, um, and that works. Um, so the Angry Birds Node.js code works better than the rest, but okay, um, and <laughs> it's actually fun. Um, but uh, no, I never tried that. I only use it for work purposes, of course, <laughs> because my boss paid for the parts. By the way, uh, I have a su suggestion yeah. for upgrade for the robot. A tilting table, so you can also test tilting. <laughs> yeah, tilting would be nice. Um, I already built something for iOS. Um, so on Android, you can inject quite a lot of, even you can inject tabs on the most phones, but not on all, and that's why we need to do this. Um, but you can inject location data, rotations, uh, so the screen should rotate, something like that, on Android um, via USB. Um, but you can't do this on iOS, so I already wrote a library that fakes location um, on the phone via a socket um, that's on GitHub. Um, and um, you owe a library to fake notification is there as well. So um, some stuff can be faked, but to the tilting can't be faked. So that's something, yeah, we need a, probably a tilting table or tilting robot, or I don't know. Well, just two servos, right? So <laughs> let's see. Any more questions? Yeah. Oh. So, Okay, so actually I have a quick few questions. So the first one is um, when you're transitioning from one window to the other, do you use like a hard-coded delays or is it actually inferenced by the robot? Uh, it is, um, kind of. Um, the problem is the robot doesn't know when it taps. Um, so there's a small stylus in there. Um, you can probably see it's pink because that's the only color you get a small stylus in, uh, I saw. Um, and that's connected to ground, so um, it just needs an electric grounding to um, that it works. Uh, problem is um, that there isn't so much, so much current that you can't just can't detect it because there is just so a tiny amount of current, so not working. Um, what I just do is um, the background thread running in Python, telling the robot over WebSocket, okay, tap that. And the robot's uh, driver just knows how long he's gonna, probably going to take, plus 10%, uh, to tap, and uh, then gives back a tapped signal. But um, one way to fix that is um, there is um, a little rubber tip on that stylus, and you could probably do a little switch in there with just some foil or, I don't know, metal, um, to get a real tap feedback from it. But right now that in, isn't in there um, because you probably need to replace that stylus with something built by your own. But that probably use, could be used and the protocol um, is, uh, could use this or could work with this. Because um, I have a, like a small suggestion of how that could be used for the performance testing because you mentioned that one of the limitations of the mobile testing is that when you emulate it on, on the laptop, then you don't have the same resources. Yeah. But then um, instead of, because you externalize all the manipulation with the app, mm -hmm. but not the vision one, which is actually based on the snapshot that is taken on um, by the uh, 
code that is actually the OS of a given mm -hmm. device. So I would say that if you will go with the webcam that is actually mounted on top of the um, mobile device and it's actually trained using the deep learning algorithm in recognizing the, um, rather than the snapshot itself, but the sequence of them and learning the evolution of actually like clicking from one to the other view, you are actually training what is the performance yeah. of it. Yeah, and also that could be, could be a good solution. Um, problem is, of course, in that robot setup, um, if you put a webcam on top, there's the arm in, uh, just on front of the webcam, so that wouldn't work. Um, there are so, two solutions for this. Um, first, as you can see, I just transferred the live image of that app or that uh, phone via AirPlay. We tried that, but uh, to do that recognition, and of course you could just see if it's fast enough and stuff like that. Problem is um, that's um, too buggy, so it's too, too flappy, it just gets connection lost, something like that. Even if you do it in an ad hoc uh, wireless, I just do it here. Um, the other thing is in iOS 8, so coming in September, um, on iOS, and you can already do this on some Android device, is that you can just um, use the screen as a webcam for the PC or your Mac. So you just have a video, live video feed coming from the device. Um, that's somewhere quite hardware near to, um, that could be a better solution than having a webcam and a robot arm in front of the webcam. So, yeah. But of course, doing screenshots is a little, uh, it's not that performance testing, of course. It's more like, does it look right? Any more, Any more, more questions? Oh. I know I'm quite fast when I speak, so I left some time for questions. Oh. Hello, uh, did you experiment with the speed of the robot? So speed? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. So the um, of course it's quite limited because uh, those servers are not that fast. They're made for uh, flying an RC plane. Um, the robot can be faster. The problem is not the robot. The problem is uh, the image recognition and the transferring of that image. An iPhone 5, like this one, um, has an image of size. When it comes from the screenshot, it's 1,136 times 640 or something. It's quite large. Um, it's a PNG and um, it uh, has a very high resolution. So it's quite uh, slow to do its screenshot. It takes about a second. And of course, the image recognition is not that fast because it's based on images and not on live video feed. If you would do it with live video feed, um, it probably could be faster. Um, but with this setup, the pro of this is, or the uh, good thing about this is you don't need so much computation power to do something like this on a PC or on your Mac or something. Um, you could probably do this on a Raspberry Pi. I actually tested this, but um, it's a little flappy and I don't want to do a demo on a device where I know, oh, this could break. So yeah, so you could probably set up uh, a f some of those, like 10 for a sheep because you don't need such a, a powerful computer to do. Or you just do it with one computer for like 10 robots. That's of course possible as well. Any, so. more? Any more questions? Well, no? Okay, well, thank you very much for it. Thank you for coming.